people think of Hampton Court and Henry VIII, yes, that's true, but that's only half of the story. The other half of Hampton Court was rebuilt at the end of the 17th century by Sir Christopher Wren, and it's England's Versailles, really. It is block, it's brilliant, and people just don't know about this whole other side of the story. A king or a queen sleeps in a special kind of bed, a state bed, and it's not really for sleeping at all. Um, they were public places. They would receive visitors in bed. Sounds surprising, but this, this really did happen. It was a treat to come into an 18th century royal bedroom and to see the king or queen being dressed in public. And the people who did this were the top courtiers. There were great sort of places where people's status, their dignity was expressed, if you like. And also in royal bedchambers, we get special events like the birth of an heir to the throne, which has to be witnessed. Poor Queen Caroline in the 18th century. She has great difficulties. She has all these gynecological difficulties, but she has to give birth to her eight children in front of her husband, the Archbishop of Canterbury, and 15 other members of the court, just to check that nothing went wrong. The other weird thing that happened in a state bed is the, the public bedding of the bride and the groom after they've been married. So we have the, the public bedding of, of Princess Mary in the 17th century, aged 12. It sounds shocking and awful, and it, it wasn't followed up by physical union in her case, but it was really important that the, the, the young couple were seen in bed together, all the courtiers would troop in, and that gave it validity. The other key thing about a state bed is that it is an object of conspicuous consumption. Thousands, millions of pounds would be invested in something like this, in the textiles, in the craftsmanship, in particular the embroidery. And uh, some of the beds, like, like Queen Charlotte's, for example, it has years of needlework in it. In, in this particular case, the needlework was done by a special college of, of young girls of good family but slender means that was set up for the purpose by Queen Charlotte. And even in modern times, thousands of hours of conservation has been invested in these objects. So it's all gradually coming together for a great big explosion of, of beddiness in 2013. Now, the DCMS Wolfson Fund have given us £150,000, which is brilliant, and we're going to spend it on rewiring. Now, that sounds like the world's most boring project, but it's essential because it will enable us to use the Queen's apartments for display space. People will be able to go in there, and the first exhibition that they'll be able to see is called Secrets of the Royal Bedchamber. Now, that is not boring. The Secrets of the Royal Bedchamber are very salacious and brilliant.